Our California bishops are defending St. Junipero Serra, an 18th century Franciscan priest and missionary, after his statues were pulled down in both Los Angeles and in San Francisco. Protesters toppled the statue of Junipero Serra in Golden Gate Park over the weekend. The California Conference of Bishops says Serra actually defended the rights of Native Americans and says those that pulled down the statue, quote, failed the test of history. Joining us now on Skype to talk more about the life and legacy of St. Junipero Serra is Dr. Matthew Bunsen, executive editor and Washington bureau chief of EWTN News. Matthew is also the author of the Encyclopedia of U.S. Catholic History. Matthew, welcome back to the show. So great to see you. Always good to be with you. It's a privilege. So tell us, for those who may not be familiar, can you tell us a little bit more about who St. Junipero Serra was? Well, the, the, the title in some ways says it all. He was the Apostle of California. Through his work, and he arrived in California as a Franciscan missionary in, in his 50s, which is very late uh, when we think about the, the lifespan of people in the 18th century, uh, he helped establish nine of the 21 missions uh, that uh, established the chain of the El Camino Royal, in other words, the Royal Way, the, the great line of missions uh, across all of California. He was there to evangelize, to proclaim Jesus Christ, to save souls. And in doing so, he also helped lay so much of the foundation of what we think of today as California. He can even be called sort of the father of California wine uh, because of the, the, the agricultural uh, innovations that uh, he and his Franciscans introduced. So California simply would not look anything like California today without him. But above all, he was a saint. Well, Matthew, there seems to be some disagreement right now on his treatment of Native Americans. Can you talk about that and also how he is viewed by the biographers that studied his life? Well, one of the things that uh, we always have to be careful of when we're talking about historical figures is, uh, and, and this is true in the, the study of history, especially from an academic standpoint, uh, is that uh, we need to understand the context, we need to understand the testimony of those at the time, and we need to understand the motivations of those uh, that we're studying. In Sarah's case, uh, the more that we begin to appreciate his work, uh, we can begin to understand more profoundly his efforts to protect the Native American peoples in California uh, at a time of immense change in what became California. The great tides of colonialism were sweeping across uh, that part of the world, and he was determined to do everything he could uh, to protect the Native Americans, going so far as to walk uh, from California to Mexico City to present to the viceroy uh, there, the, the head of uh, the Spanish colonies, a petition, uh, basically the request for faculties that he could go back to California. He walked back to California uh, in order to deal with uh, the abuses of Native Americans on the part of colonial forces. Now, if, if we really appreciate uh, Sarah's work in this area, I think we have a much more fair understanding uh, of what he tried to do, uh, rather than to see this through an ideological lens that unfortunately is coloring so much of the discussion today. Uh, we know that he helped to convert thousands of native Californians to Christianity. Is there one thing that stands out to you about his dedication to the faith in the Catholic Church? Well, there are a couple things. So the, the first is uh, at the canonization ceremony in 2015, uh, Pope Francis in Washington, D.C., uh, made the point that uh, Sarah's motto was siempre adelante, always forward. Uh, and that is, in a way, a motto for Pope Francis as well, always going forward. And one of the things that uh, we can see with Sarah is he was walking, always going forward. And for Sarah himself then, uh, it was a desire to bring Christ to everyone. But he walked, as I said, but he did so on a very damaged leg. Uh, he had injured it shortly after arriving in Mexico City. And that plagued him for the rest of his life. So every step he took was filled with pain. Uh, but he did so out of genuine conviction of bringing Christ uh, to the new world. Oh, well, Matthew, we don't have much time left, but I know that you were actually at that canonization ceremony. Uh, can you kind of give us a brief outlook of how it was that day, the feelings there, and also what you took away from it? Well, to be present for any canonization uh, is a unique experience for all of us. Uh, I have had the privilege of attending a number of them, including St. Damien of Molokai, Kateri Tekakwitha. Uh, this one was unique because it was here in the United States with Pope Francis in attendance. 
And I remember vividly the celebrations of the Native Americans there uh, who understood what Sarah had tried to do in his lifetime. And also how it was so important for Sarah to bring Christ to the new world. That statue that was toppled in San Francisco over the weekend really says it all. An, an outstretched hand uh, of blessing holding a cross. Uh, it is a great loss to culture, the history, but it's a reminder of all of us to stay faithful to what Sarah actually wanted to do. Matthew, indeed, and thank you so much. Always great speaking with you. Thank you for your insight. Dr. Matthew Bunsen, Executive Editor and Washington Bureau Chief of EWTN News. Thanks again, Matthew. Great to be with you. God bless.